um, compost with peat moss, it tends to moderate the pH, so you don't necessarily need to add lime, right? Okay. Because the peat moss is naturally quite acidic. Right, so usually yeah. if you've got peat moss mixed in with other non-soil items, <coughs> um, you need to add a little bit of lime to bring the pH uh, to a, a more neutral pH, so it's, it's, it's uh, friendlier to the plant. But if you use compost, it does that automatically. Oh. Right. Okay. So I'm not sure about the effect of worm castings on the pH, and they say that with worm castings, it depends what the worms have been eating, mm -hmm. right? And the the, yeah. the uh, uh, nutrients in it and the pH are dependent on what those worms have been breaking well, down. Well, so just feed them champagne and caviar. <laughs> well, I was thinking that I was thinking about that with the worm farm thing. Is that you yeah. know one could experiment with that yeah. if you got yeah. one. You can experiment with that too and see how your your, your um, oh, uh, food fun. comes out in terms of your fertilizer. Oh man, right? it gets so complicated. The only season potatoes are super alkaline. Yeah. <laughs> potatoes, that's right. But this right. one's citrus. Yeah. yeah. Cooked. Right. Cooked. Yeah. And see, Easier to do happens. a pH test, I think. Um, so two of the things that you can put uh, into soil mixes that um, um, help with aeration and water retention are vermiculite and perlite. And vermiculite is, uh, is a, a natural rock or, or a mineral substance and actually occurs in sheets. Um, and it will actually break down over time and it has a little bit of mineral value. It gives a bit of food to plants. Um, perlite has no food value, doesn't break down, but it's, it's, it holds up better for aeration because it doesn't break down. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> you can use both. You can I use just one. You know, but Do you have an example of what that looks like? Don't well, well, I'll bring that. I'll bring. Yeah. The, I'm going to bring all the different materials to uh, our good. next meeting, yeah. right? And then we can we can mess around with making some some mixes. You don't want us to go buy some of this stuff to make sure we. Well, we were going to. Well, we had talked about if we agree on what kind of a mix we want to make, then maybe we could get the materials for the program here, and then just make a group mix and everybody uses it. Everybody if we want to experiment, the then then yeah. yeah, then people should probably we be contribute buying the extras. Yeah, why don't we get a small amount to do a first group mix, like a general group mix yeah. that mm -hmm. we could plant most things in, mm -hmm. and then after that, people can purchase what they like. Yeah. They want. Well, they can also take that basic mix and they can amend it by adding different things to yeah. experiment as well. Okay. That's because uh, cool. you know that uh, a lot of other uh, fancier mixes, people will start adding. Uh, they'll start adding blood meal and they'll start adding. And then different things like that. Um, these mixes here are a lot more basic, and they've they've got. I think there's one. I think I've got one recipe mm -hmm. yeah, here where it's blood meal, rock phosphate, and green sand. The other two just rely on compost or worm castings in terms of uh, food for the starting plant. And then when you make when you transplant it into a, a different container, um, then that next potting mix will have more food in it for the plant, right? right? Yeah. Well, I'm thinking. No, I don't know. So I'm asking. The seedling flat mix, that's mm -hmm. very interesting mm -hmm. because then you're looking at doing a tray of seedlings. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, could on that seedling flat mix, would it can go in containers, going out into the containers too? Okay. Yeah. Wouldn't I want to put, let's say, if I've, I've got an organic uh, fertilizer mixture mm -hmm. that I'm going to use in the field, wouldn't I want to put a, a bit of that into my seedling flat mix for them when I transplant? They're already gone and got. Mm -hmm. Yes, and yes, but it's it's tricky on how you do it because when you put um, when you've planted your seed and you've got your your um, <coughs> let's say you've got a mix with some kind of fertilizer in it or, in it, or even just the compost and worm casting, the seed is uh, essentially it's just feeding off of the, the the food in the seed itself. It's not eating any of those materials. So what tends to happen is you get algae and things springing up feeding on, especially if your compost hasn't been cooked well, and, that, but the, and it can be feeding on um, um, other additives. Ah. So what I tend to do is I will make this kind of a mix, and then I will make a mix of that plus additives, like what an organic fertilizer mm -hmm. mix, and I will put that in the bottom layer of the tray, and then on the top layer of the tray, I have this one without additives, <laughs> because the algae is not going to start ah. deep down. It's a surface thing. Clever. Right? Mm -hmm. And then by the time the plants have sprouted and started to grow roots, they're reaching down below and they're getting that food. Uh, yeah. At the right? time they need them. Exactly. Exactly. Love it. And that way you're not, uh, that's, that's you're not feeding things that. you don't want to feed. Smart mix. Right? A smart mix. It's that's a smart right. mix. <laughs> because we call mix. it a smart mix. Yeah. You patent that. Call it the smart mix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good idea. Galleon is smart mix. <laughs> but I thought that, that that's something that uh, um, even here, this, this first one where you've got the compost or the worm casting, um, you can just do the mix of the peat moss and the and the vermiculite 
I, I would, if I'm just going to do that on the surface, I'd put just a touch of lime in it, and then um, do the same mix with the compost and worm castings for the bottom half of whatever the container is. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then, uh, and Great. then you, you've got it'll grow for quite a while in the, in the one container and have plenty of food and be happy. Yeah, until it's root, when it gets root bound. But and yeah. onions, we were just talking about onions in particular that spend about a month in that container. Yeah, and heavy and, feeders. And no seeds to feed on those. So yeah, they they need great. Yeah, I've I've started a bunch of onions and leeks at home. Uh, well, about a week and a half ago. And what did you do? Yeah, I'm gung ho. I'm gonna yeah, do. Me actually, too. <laughs> I don't just do one one start of things. I do a couple starts because mm -hmm. of it's weather, true, right? True. And because you never know what's gonna happen with them. Yeah, yeah. and timings every two weeks even. Uh, it, I have I have actually a few grow lights inside the house, okay. right? And I've got a couple tables set up. Yeah, because I, I get pretty excited about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my first grow light. Yeah, yeah, and I, I mean, I'd love to. I've got a greenhouse, but no, it's not heated. And eventually, yeah. I'd love to get an old wood stove in there or something and, and do that. Mm. But then that's a whole other thing, right? And then you've got to be maintaining the heat in there as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's so for now, it's in the house, house right? And then, the house, yeah. yeah. You're oh, yeah. As long well, as you got I got stands. armies of artichokes. Yeah, I don't yes. mind. That's yeah. Good. Yeah. I want to see your artichokes in your house. <laughs> I'll videotape them. Yeah, I'll, I'll videotape the next week. It's inspiring to have your transplants in your house, all looking at you, going, yeah. hey, here we are. We're doing they great. greet me every morning. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Janice. No, they don't. They all face out the window. Oh. Yeah. But you make them work for swivel a living. Swivel them. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I do. You do swivel them, right? Or else you get like the bent plant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, and, and the other thing is you do, if you've got starting them in the house, um, most plants you do want to be making sure you harden off well before you go outside. Yep. Yeah. You don't there want to shock them. There are a couple em. exceptions to the hardening off thing, okay. and that's actually Troy. Okay. Yeah. That uh, I, the Troy and uh, and some of the Asian greens, if you if they've gone from warm and then you harden them off into the cool before they go out, they will go to flower. Mm. Right. Yeah. So it's better that they just stay in the warm until the temperature outside is okay to just put them straight out. Yeah, but most plants that you want to do, but make sure you do the hardening yeah. off thing. So yeah. the um, I know the, the the leeks, onions, the three things that you start <coughs> now. Oh, there are more than three. We'll go oh, oh, more than three. Okay, Please. so what more. what we could be starting now? Leeks, onions, celery, because it takes forever if you're doing it from seed. Parsley, same thing, takes about twenty days to germinate. Um, peppers, Fen eggplant. Fennel. Yeah. Fennel. Beans. Fennel, yes. Um, broad beans you could do. Uh, um, well, broad beans. Sweet asparagus, beans. Asparagus, if you want to do asparagus from start. Yeah. Um, from, from seed, which is, that's a, that's a job. So the onion one. starts, onions mm -hmm. with the onions, fennel, and, um, and, and celery. Celery. And celery. You yeah. start inside, do you like it warm inside? Yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. Have to. You have okay. to have the warm to get them to start. And that's why they're in our kitchen. under the bottom, yeah. like a nice little heating pad under there. And artichokes. And you can still do artichokes. Yes, I of course you do artichokes, yes. But uh, I actually did a hot water bottle for a yeah, while there because yeah. my heating pad just gave it up. So Someone just gave me an old heating pad. Yeah. yeah. No and I, and I've, got a, I've got a wood box set up just right next to the fireplace so oh I can put my yeah. trays there and do the little, for the peppers. Because the peppers, peppers and eggplants have to be mm -hmm. really warm to get them to sprout. Wow. That soil temperature, I think it's almost 70 degrees or at least 72 degrees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To get them to sprout, and then once they've sprouted, they can be a few degrees cooler. Well, it's hard to keep the moisture as well as possible. Yeah. So what I do is I've got my tray, and I've got them planted, and next to a source of heat, and I've got plastic on top. I just yeah. cut up an old plastic oh, bag. Oh, so they need moisture right lay it on top. Humidity. Yeah, yeah, to keep the humidity in there. Yeah. yeah. To cover and make it spread. Yeah. 